Hi guys, welcome to my podcast. My name is Nicole and I'm the brains and the beauty behind Yarncraft by Nicole. Today, my featured make is a little smaller than normal and it is my twisted Tunisian headband. Um, this looks like knit, but it's actually a Tunisian stitch. And I made this with leftover yarn. Um, this was a beautiful skein I bought in uh, Los Angeles, California mixed in with this um, Ahsoka colorway. If you're a Star Wars fan, you probably recognize that name. But I love it because the colors blend in really nicely. And this particular headband I've got kind of folded up on itself, but in the winter I use it to cover my ears. And it's nice and warm, but I thought it was just the right touch for today where I've been pretty busy making some things um, and not having to worry about wearing something that um, I might get something on. <laughs> if we're being perfectly honest. Um, but there are tons of Tunisian twisted headbands. You can find lots of videos online. Um, if you would like me to make one too, just let me know in the comments. It can be something that I add to my summer list of things to make. Okay, so I'm gonna start today with talking to you about me painting myself a little bit into a corner um, because I had a project that I really wanted to do for my sister that I might have waited a little bit too long to do and I started it last Saturday yeah last Saturday and I will finish it today which is awesome because I need to mail it out by next Thursday and then also make something for her fiance who um, they have the same birthday, which is adorable. So I'm making something for her. I'm making something her, for her fiance. It's like a, um, a crop top with a little strawberry design for her fiance. And um, I am working furiously to finish those. But I will say this is like the fastest that I will have ever put together a garment of this size. And I am absolutely loving the color. So I'm going to start with this. It is another Pebble Path cardigan, um, but this one is all in this really pretty red. As you can see, I have to weave in that end a little bit. Um, but I finished the second sleeve last night. It has the beautiful bead stitch at the bottom, just like the one I did for my best friend. And it is just beautiful and soft and I love it. Um, I've got a little bit more of the ribbing in the middle to work on, and then I did one pocket. Oh, let's throw it up so you can see. I did one pocket, it's just not sewn in yet. It's over there in my little making space. Um, but then I'll have another pocket, finish up the middle ribbing, steam it, and this is done. So this will be done today, and I am very excited about it. And like, I just love the color. She gave me a couple of options of colors that she would like. And then um, she hasn't seen it in the process. So um, I'm really excited about it. And everyone that I've shown this to is like, oh, that'll look so good on your sister. And it will look so good on my sister. I tried it on, I'm like, this looks good on me. Of course it's gonna be looking good on her. I'm using Cot Lynn for this project, the same that I did for the other Pebble Path cardigan. And it just behaves really nicely. It lays really nicely. It has a good feel. I will be using that yarn again for sure. You can find it from Knit Picks or Weed Crochet um, and it is a 70% cotton, 30% linen DK weight yarn. But I love it and comes in a ton of colors. And it'll just be cozy. And it's such a pretty red. I love that for her. Also, she's a Bama fan. And that was the first thing that my mom said when I sent her a picture. She's like, oh, that'll be good for her <laughs> when she wants to rep Alabama. I was like, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, it's a good roll tide, roll tide burgundy. Okay, this is the only finished project that I have for this week, and it is so much fun. So, this is the Very Vero v neck from Knitting Tipsy, and it's so cute. I love this border. I want to put it on anything and everything. Um, I love that it has a, a V neckline in the front and in the back. I will tell you, I used Kobu for this project, which is a cotton and bamboo blend. It was very lovely to work with. I like the yarn, but this neckline was not this big when I first put it on. Like this has significantly grown. So what I will probably do is throw this in the washer and dryer see if that gets the yarn to behave a little bit better. 
kind of hold a shape a little bit more but the pattern itself calls for like an optional tie that you can do in the back to have like a way of keeping it kind of on your shoulders i did not do that because i didn't think i needed it when i first did this because i did my neckline a little bit shallower but as i wore this to go take pictures and i wore this to the pool like it just kept growing um so that is my only caveat is that for this particular garment i might have might have needed to choose a different yarn or just adding in that little tie um, that the pattern called for but i love it um i have a feeling i will be taking this with me when we are traveling this summer because it's just a super cute and super easy piece and it came out exactly like the colors came out exactly the way i wanted them to i took pictures of this um and posted them on instagram last week so if you want to see how this fits how cute it was as a cover-up at the pool go check out my insta that is the very vero v-neck from knitting tipsy she also is doing a very vero skirt so if you want to do like a set where you have the top and the long skirt and then she's also doing a dress version so if you are not following her on insta go check her out she's great the other thing that i've been doing i actually kind of had to stop doing a little bit while i was working on my sister's cardigan was these cute squares that I showed you last week. So this is the one I showed you last week. This is um, a version of the Amelia quilt square pattern from E. Claire Makery, Claire Goodale. She is a master of color work. Love her, love her techniques, love her designs. I shrunk the square a little bit because I wanted something a little smaller. So I just eliminated a couple of rows and made this one last week. And then I've made a lot more. So I made this one, which looks like Scooby-Doo to me. I made this one, which looks very Art Deco. Made this one. Clearly you can see a theme with some of the yarn that I had a lot of. And I have really enjoyed making these. And it's just fun to see all the different color combinations. So my goal for this again is to make like a quilt of it and just using a bunch of leftover worsted weight yarn that I have. All of this is acrylic, so it'll be something that can be thrown in the washing machine and something that I can throw over anything and not worry about it getting damaged. But this has been a really fun project and I love it. And it has inspired me to want to do more corner to corner color work because I really haven't done much of that. That is the photograph falling behind me on the shelf. Okay, so that's the current projects, finished objects, whips. Now we get into yarn love. And guys, I've got a lot of fun things to show you, one of which arrived today that I checked outside before starting this video to see if it had gotten here because I wanted to show it to you and it did and I'm so glad. So I'm actually gonna start with that. And the first yarn I'm gonna show you for yarn love is from Terrapin Fiberworks. Look at this. I hope that the light can get a little, there we go. It's a better view of it. Um, <clears throat> I have three skeins of this beautiful one of a kind colorway um, from a dyer that I know on Instagram. I mean, come on. That is stunning. So pretty. It actually kind of goes with what I'm wearing. Um, she, the owner of Terrapin Fiber Works, is awesome. I have tested with her in pattern tests before online. Um, and she had a big sale of one-of-a-kind skeins, which a lot of yarn dyers are doing, which I think is awesome, where if they have skeins that they were using to maybe test different colorways or um, didn't quite come out the way they wanted it to, what have you, um, and then do a big sale of just those colors. So I got these three, and this is a, um, this is her Chesapeake um, DK. It's 100% organic cotton, and the name of this color white was Swallow Falls. Beautiful, stunning. And um, I got a good deal on it with that sale, but I wanted to buy from her, one, because she's awesome and I love her colors. And two, I wanted to use cotton in a design that I have in my head. And I knew that she did really 
beautiful neutrals and I wanted something that had a little bit of a speckle to it um, but wasn't overall neutral and so I was thrilled that I got these and the design that I'm thinking of is a um, cowl that looks like the Colosseum in Rome because I think that would be very cute and like the full Colosseum not like with that not with what it looks like now but what it looked like originally so I, I have an idea for that I might not need all three skeins but figured might as well get an extra one if I um, need it and it's just a really pretty colorway she also sent the cutest little stitch marker Let's see if the camera will cooperate um, that is a little wooden stitch marker it's got a clasp which is good for crocheters um, instead of just the ring which is better for knitters um, but I thought it was really cute and I absolutely love this my husband and I are about to be traveling a decent amount <laughs> over the summer and this is gonna be one of the projects that I work on is the Coliseum cowl so I'm thrilled about that okay the next thing I'm going to show you is ugh, this beautiful skein of yarn. So I've shown you this skein before. This was a Hedgehog Fibers yarn, and I do not remember what the name of the colorway was, but I bought it in Kansas City. I thought it was absolutely stunning, um, a color that I usually don't gravitate towards, which is orange, and I thought it would be really pretty in a confetti DK pullover. And that is um, a design by Nomad Stitches. So that's her handle on Instagram. I think that's also her design, like business name is Nomad Stitches. But it's this beautiful um, linen stitch sweater that transitions from one color to another with like how you, <clears throat> basically how you add different colors in. And it's called the Confetti Pullover. Confetti TK pullover. And I had a skein of yarn. Do I have it with me? <clears throat> I had a skein of yarn that I bought that I thought would go well with it. And it, it probably would go well with it. And I really like this colorway anyway. I bought it on sale. Um, but then I, I hadn't bought anything else. I was thinking maybe add in a hot pink because there's some pink flux in here. Um, but I was at Spun my local yarn store which is awesome and they had some real gems on their clearance rack so i saw this beautiful color which is from haynes house yarn it's called lello how cute is that kind of this assay green i thought oh that is perfect so i got three skeins of that to go with it and then I went back, I was actually on a mission for my mom, which was a successful mission, but I went back to their um, clearance rack, you know, just to see if any other skeins needed to be adopted and come home with me. And I found this gorgeous navy that picks up the blue flex. And I found this awesome orange. So now I'm thinking the navy will be the top closest to my neckline transition into the speckle which will then transition into this orange which will then transition into the lello and i think that's the winning combo that way the really loud color still gets a lot of attention kind of in the middle and kind of gets you the most bang for your buck right there um but also just uses all of these gorgeous colors um both of these two are haynes house yarns this orange is called the most determined flirt how pretty is that and then this one is from fully spun and it is called post oh no, it's called good navy postscript dk is the name of the weight and looking upon this a little bit closely i know that there's no way that my camera will really do this color justice but it's a really dark navy that almost fades to black like it's stunning and so that this project will probably come on our first trip um, when we are in New York after I finish these two projects for my sister and her fiance. Um, and then maybe the Coliseum, maybe the Coliseum cow. But that is what I've got going on. That's what I've got planned next. 
So I'm gonna wrap up with a little bit of what I can't let go of. And guys, what I can't let go of is how, how our Supreme Court is set up. And that's just, um, that's the way that, that's the way that we'll phrase it. Not just like the particular composition of conservative and liberal justices on the court now, but just the fact that there is no like ethics oversight. Um, I taught government for a while and obviously I knew that there were no term limits on, um, on the Supreme Court justices and that was designed by the Founding Fathers to have a really stable branch of government um, that didn't change much. But the fact that three of the Supreme Court justices on the court were all nominated by a single president, like that's, I, I don't think that that is what um, the founders envisioned when they set the idea of, uh, of no term limits. And just how, how quickly things can change based on what the composition of the court is and, and the amount of um, Supreme Court activism that they decide to do. And that's one thing that I just can't let go of this week is we elect officials, we elect president, local leaders, we elect people um, in the legislative branch. And those people are who ultimately say yay or nay to a Supreme Court justice nomination. But it's the Supreme Court justices just haven't gotten haven't, how do I want to say this, the amount of power that they have and can use, like just isn't as broadcasted. Like a lot of people just have not taken that into effect until um, a decision like they made last week, which had been leaked uh, before of overturning Roe v. Wade. Like the fact that that could change so quickly, um, a lot of people didn't didn't see and there's there are a lot more things that they are deciding now um, at the end of their session that are that can change a lot of people's lives um, more than I think most of us realized and that's just what I can't let go of this week is it's always been a branch that has has done the work ahead of them and has um, done the job as they see but the just the the lack of um, once someone is in place, like they're in place until the end. They're in place until they're either impeached or decide to retire or pass away. And that's, that's it. And that's just what I can't let go of this week um, is the way that that is structured and set up. I hope you have a wonderful week um, going into the weekend. I hope you have time to relax and craft. And um, I will see you next time. Bye guys.